We've seen a user form in action using a set of radio buttons, option buttons, as Excel likes to call them, and the OK and Cancel. What we're going to have a look at now is some of the other toolbox options for placing onto dialog box. Using the form template file, you'll find that in the Visual Basic, we have a sample form called sample. It already has an OK and a cancel button, and I've even colored them in to prove that that's possible. You'll find the color and in properties, select the particular object, come down, you can change the back color. You'll find there's a little drop list to choose between the system or the palette. System you'll see is just mainly grays because that's the interface used here. We have four color, same thing. You've got system for all the various grays of the actual Windows interface, but also a palette for setting exact colors. You can change the typeface. So you can choose all the ones available in your font on your machine. And the same goes for the OK button. Behind each of these buttons, I've already added a snippet of code. Behind the OK button, we've got a little place where we're going to add in all our actions, but then it unloads the sample form. And the command button just simply unloads the sample form. That way, if you actually run your form, both the OK and the cancel button at the moment cancel the form. You'll also notice that the OK button is the default. Again, that's set in the properties. You select the item, come down to default and set to true. So it's this file that we'll use as a basis for adding other toolbox controls. And you'll see that. On the toolbox, there are a number of other controls that we need to just visit, and some of them we'll give a little overview to, some of them we'll go in a little bit more in depth. Firstly, we're going to have a look at the checkbox control. So let's take our Excel file and just give it a different name so that we don't overwrite our form template and call this checkbox. So if we want to add some checkboxes to our user form, we simply choose the checkbox as we've chosen objects before. Come across and click, and you can have as many or as few as you want. Let's take three. Now, unlike the option boxes that we used previously, these do not interact with each other. So clicking one doesn't unclick another. So the first one has a label of checkbox one. Come down here, we can change that caption. It doesn't have to say checkbox one. It can say meet, and the name for it could be a more sensible name than just checkbox one. I'm going to call mine check me. And then checkbox two can be check fruit. And its caption can be fruit. And the same for checkbox three. Check veg. And its caption vegetables. Make sure you have nothing selected but the form. And then it will run. You'll find that these do not interact with each other at all. You can click on, off, on, off, on, off separately, and they don't affect each other whatsoever. But obviously, they're not doing anything either. Now, with a checkbox, if I select the meet one again, for example, there are a couple of bits that can be quite useful. There's the accelerator. That's the letter from the MEAT that can be typed using Alt on the keyboard to make the tick appear. So we could perhaps choose the M. And for fruit, we could choose the F. And for vegetables, we could choose the V. Form, run. The first of those letters now underline. So I can do Alt M and it will automatically tick meat. And Alt M will untick it so it becomes a toggle. F will do the fruit. And V will do the vegetables. Notice that cancel has an end. So I could cancel this form by doing Alt N. Your tick boxes can be on by default. If we come down to value, value is either true or false. And with a tick box, it's a simply Boolean option. So true will make them already ticked. So there you see meets already ticked because the value has been set true. So there's a bit of flexibility with the checkbox. It's an on off state, so it's only a yes or a no or a true or a false, but it can default to on or default to off. Now the other thing we can do is we can actually link a checkbox to a cell on the sheet. So in order to link each of our checkboxes to a cell on the sheet, we simply select the appropriate checkbox, come down to control source, 
and give it a cell reference. So let's say that's A1, having no imagination whatsoever. Fruit is A2, and vegetables are A3. We then run our form. You'll find that meat and vegetables have nothing in them, so they're sort of greyed out. They're in this state of, well, I'm not a yes and I'm not a no. But if we were to tick, so it becomes a positive tick, you get true in A1. Take the tick away, you get false. Same for fruit, you can see it's affecting A2, and vegetables is affecting A3. Because of what you do here, you could be having an effect on the rest of the sheet by use of other formulas to check values, etc. But you can see that just by linking straight through there, we're not having to use any code behind the OK button to affect those cells. If you did want to use clicking of these to affect the values of cells, that is also achievable by adding some code behind the OK button. Because our check buttons are simply true false, we can soon check what's been selected. So we could say if check meet, then we don't need to say if check meet equals true. Because effectively by saying if check meet, that's what you're doing. Then into the cell B1, we could put the text meet. What we ought to do is put an else and range B1 equals empty. So if we run that, we have meat selected. So if I say OK and have a look, we have the word meat in there. However, if we run this again and I take the tick out and OK and go back, because of the else, the meat's now gone. If I hadn't put that else in, then the word meat would remain there, even though I've taken the tick out of meat, because I've not allowed for the, the reverse happening. So that's inside the OK button. We're checking if check meat then, and we can do what we like here, else we can do what we like. And we could do exactly the same for the other check buttons. If check fruit, then whatever we want to do. If check vegetables, then whatever we want to do. We might even want to combine them together. And so well, if they've chosen meat and vegetables, then we'll do this. So if check meat and check veg. So you can see the endless combination options there. We have our check boxes placed onto our form. We set their names, we set their values, we set their defaults. We can link them to a cell, which will just put the true or the false independent on whether the value has been ticked or not. The most important bit is behind this OK button, which is where people expect the work to take place. When you click OK, that's when you expect things to happen. That's where we do the, let's see what they've chosen and carry out some commands.